Welcome to American History Lesson 10. Union Problems. Our lesson objectives are, identify and understand how differing viewpoints led to political instability. Identify and understand actions that further divided Northern and Southern America. Identify key figures who impacted both sides of the union's debate. The Growing Division of American Politics. The American North and South were vastly different and each had its own economy and society. The North was heavily industrialized with many factories, boasted over 20,000 miles of railroad track, and established prosperous cities. The North was populated with immigrants who generally opposed slavery. The South was still an agricultural society with little industry and few immigrants in the population. During a congressional debate about funding the Mexican War, Pennsylvania Congressman David Wilmot tried to add an amendment that would ban slavery from any territory the United States gained in the war. Northern Congress members were in support of the amendment, but Southern Congress members were not in favor of it. The Wilmot provision did, did pass two times in the House, but never passed in the Senate. When California applied for statehood as a free state in 1849, the slavery debate continued. Southerners believed California should be a slave state because most of the state was south of the Missouri Compromise Line. When this idea was rejected, some Southerners threatened to have Southern states leave the Union. Henry Clay of Kentucky developed this compromise, admit California as a state, but then passed strict laws for punishing runaway slaves. Clay was supported by his longtime opponent, Daniel Webster of Massachusetts, but John C. Calhoun of South Carolina led the opposition from the southern states. This compromise did not pass, so Senator Stephen Douglas of Illinois decided to look at the bill differently. He was able to get the compromise passed by submitting each part of it as a separate bill. In this manner, the Compromise of 1850 became law. The Fugitive Slave Law angered people in the North, so much so that nine northern states passed laws that forbid the imprisonment of fugitive slaves and guaranteed jury trials to African Americans that were charged as escaped slaves. Free African Americans and sympathetic whites created a secret network of safe houses that sheltered escaping slaves on their journey to the North. This system of safe, safe houses later became known as the Underground Railroad. Harriet Tubman, an escaped slave, was deeply involved in the Underground Railroad. The slavery was further incited by the book Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe. This best-selling novel convinced many people that slavery was an ethical issue, not a political one. Slavery again arose in the debates over the Kansas and Nebraska territories. Stephen Douglas wanted to give Kansas and Nebraska people the right to choose to be a slave state or not. This idea was called popular sovereignty, which meant that the people would decide the issue through voting, with the most voting deciding the issue. To do this, Congress needed to repeal the Missouri Compromise because that banned slavery in these territories. Despite an outcry from the South, the Popular Sovereignty Plan passed the Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854. Now that the slavery issue was based on popular sovereignty, the territories would become slave states or free states depending on which side had the most votes. Anti-slavery Northerners and pro-slavery Southerners hurried to settle Kansas. John Brown, an opponent of slavery, killed five pro-slavery people in a raid and sparked a small war that killed approximately 200 people. The Impact of Slavery on the Political Process the political parties felt the impact, the effects of these events and in some ways did not recover. New political parties began to form because of the differences between North and South. The Whig Party, divided between anti-slavery Northerners and pro-slavery Southerners, eventually just collapsed. Because of the divisiveness, a Democrat won the 1852 campaign for president. Some of the Whigs joined forces with the new American Party. Members of the American Party were worried about the constant immigration. These were called nativists because they tended to favor American citizens who were born in the United States over immigrants. Nativists wanted to extend the time required for immigrants to earn citizenship. At first, the party pros prospered in the 1854 elections, but northern and southern groups continued to argue over slavery and the party disappeared. Political parties dedicated to opposing slavery were formed. The Free Soil Party gained 10% of the vote in the 1848 presidential election. 
The Free so Soil Party did not survive, but did make way for the Republican Party. Although Republicans did not support the extension of slavery, they did not push for equal right, rights for African Americans. Republican Party united differing political parties and defeated the American Party. In 1856, the Republicans ran John C. Fremont as their first presidential candidate. James Buchanan, the Democrat can Democratic candidate, won the election, but with less than half of the popular vote. There were several events that severely divided the North and South. First, the Supreme Court decision, Dred Scott versus Sanford, dealt with a slave named Dred Scott who had been transported to free states. Scott sued for his freedom, stating that living in a free state gave him freed status. His argument was denied in the Supreme Court decision. Kansas applied for statehood with a constitution that allowed slavery. President Buchanan accepted the Kansas Constitution, even though most Kansans openly opposed slavery. Congress passed a law that required a vote on the Kansas Constitution. The Constitution was defeated, which Northerners approved, but Southerners did not. Douglas ran for re-election to the Senate in 1858, and his opponent was a not-so-famous lawyer, Republican Abraham Lincoln. Douglas defeat, defended popular sovereignty, and Lincoln argued that slavery was immoral. He called for Congress to pass a law to exclude it from the territories. Douglas won the election, but Lincoln gained notoriety across the country. In 1859, the slavery debate became violent again. John Brown, who had fought in Bleeding, Kansas, attempted to organize a slave revolt. He and his small group of followers captured the federal arsenal at Harpers Ferry, Virginia. They wanted to obtain guns to arm the slaves. Federal soldiers captured Brown. He was tried and convicted of treason against the United States and was executed. Many Northerners hailed Brown as a freedom martyr, but Southerners began to talk about secession from the United States. Fun fact, John Brown tried to convince fellow abolitionist Frederick Douglass to join in the raid, but Douglass declined, saying the raid was a suicide mission. Three of Brown's sons, as well as 10 of his men, would be killed during and after the attack. One Marine and six civilians were also killed. Reaching the breaking point. Regional differences were present during the election of 1860. The Republicans nominated Lincoln as their presidential candidate. The Democratic Party was split between Northern Democrats supporting Douglas and Southern Democrats supporting Vice President John C. Breckinridge of Kentucky. John Bell of Tennessee was backed by a fourth party that was pro-union. Having so many candidates divided the vote and helped Lincoln win the election. Although President Lincoln was supported by Northerners and parts of the South, his name did not even appear on the ballot. Southern states were afraid that a Republican president who was so against slavery would mean laws passed to abolish slavery, so the southern, southern states began to leave the Union. South Carolina seceded on December 20, 1860, with six other states following. In 1861, these states formed the Confederate States of America. Jefferson Davis of Mississippi was chosen to serve as president of the Confederacy. President Buchanan did not make any attempts to stop the secession, and Lincoln took office in March amidst the turmoil. What next? Take the time to go back and review the lesson on your own. After your review, complete the lesson review for the lesson and submit for grading. Remember, your submission should follow all the rules for standard written English. All submissions must be written in your own words and sources you cited at the end. How to cite sources in APA format. When you reference a source within an APA style paper, whether it is using a direct quote, repurposing an image, or simply referring to an idea or theory, you should insert an in-text citation, the author's surname, and the date of publication within parentheses straight after a direct quote. Citationmachine.net will assist you in creating citations.